Hello and welcome to Channel 2S. I'm your host, Second Soundwave, and Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise is finally public. Now, technically, the show's not supposed to air on TV until Saturday. However, the first two episodes have been uploaded early on to Gundam Info. I watched both of them this morning, and I gotta say, it's not completely terrible. They have made a few minor improvements that could make this turn out to be a better show than the original Build Divers. For starters, the characters are playing through a story mode in the game, so they actually have something that they're kind of generally progressing towards over the course of the show, which will hopefully make it feel less aimless than the first season did. And all four of the main characters feel like they're very clearly hiding something, so we're probably going to be learning more about them as the show goes on, which should give us some pretty good character development. The quadrupling down on the furry bait this season was really, really weird. I don't know why they're leaning so hard into that angle. But since we're only a couple episodes in, there's only so much we can tell about the show so far. Even though I wasn't a big fan of the first season, I'm gonna keep watching Re-Rise and see where it goes. But before we go any deeper into this video, I gotta mention our sponsor, New Type HQ. New Type HQ is a US-based Gunpla store for all your Gundam kits, your paint, your tools, your accessories, your supplies, whatever you need to do the hobby, New Type HQ probably has it. So if you wanna get yourself some cool Gunpla stuff, check out the link at the description below and don't forget to use code CHANNEL2S for 10% off your order. And if you're feeling particularly insane, they did just get a shipment in of Maganac 36 packs. Make of that what you will. But back onto the main topic of Bill Divers Re-Rise, not only did we get to see the episodes, but of course we got to see the opening animation itself as well, which is always an interesting thing with these anime because, well, they always spoil the hell out of the show. It's just an anime tradition at this point. You see every character that hasn't been introduced yet. You see the guys that are supposedly bad guys fighting alongside the protagonist. You see the guy that's supposedly weak and useless doing his big super attack that he's not supposed to have yet. They just spoil everything. And in the case of Gundam openings in particular, they usually show off new mobile suits that haven't been introduced yet. So the first hint of anything new we saw was a Haro. Now there were three Haros you see in this quick little shot. One of them's the Zacrello Haro we've already seen. One of them's the Ball Haro that's already out. However, the main Haro you see here is a half pink, half green Haro, which is a new Haro. Now there is another new Haro model as well that I didn't get together pics for, the, pics for this video, but I might talk about some other time. That's basically like the Gundam Breaker mobile version of it, where it actually opens up in the middle, kind of like the way the, uh, the gacha system for the pilots works in that game. I might throw a picture of it up on screen. It's a really just a minor retool of the existing Haro model. And this one's just a pretty minor recolor. But judging by where the split is, it might actually require some new tooling because from what I remember, the two halves of the Haro are front and back. So unless half this kit is literally slathered in stickers, they're gonna need to add some extra color separation. Now the next big thing of note we saw was a lot more of the Eldora army. So we've seen the Eldora brute already. It's like a four-legged version of the Death Army. A pretty cool looking design. And here we can see a few other minor variations of it. Now, obviously we're not gonna get all of these as kits. In fact, we might not get any of these as kits. But we can still see a few different arm variants and weapon variants and equipment variants for the Eldora Brute. Who knows? Maybe we'll see a PB and I set. Maybe we'll see some build custom packs. The NPD Leos are also making a return in a slightly more evil looking color scheme. And then the main attraction of the Eldora Army is this mobile suit, which they featured front and center here, making me think there's probably a pretty good chance we're gonna actually see a kit of this one. And this is what appears to be some kind of Dotris variant. Now I'm basically going off the head for that since that's the only part of it that immediately jumps out to me is based off the Dotris. The body looks to be heavily modified. The shoulders look to be really heavily modified. I don't remember these ridged pieces and the spikes in the shoulders being part of the original Dotris design. So I would assume there's gonna be a lot of new tooling here. Whatever it ends up being, it is gonna have to be a totally new mold because there is no existing high grade for the Dotris. And seeing as Bandai seems to be on a bit of a run lately where they've been doing 90s grunt suits like the Leo and the Maganac and the Death Army, it really wouldn't be completely out of the question for them to do a Dotris as well. Just a few frames later in the opening, we can also see that the rifle on the Dotris has some sort of opening gimmick where the barrel splits into four pieces and he shoots a big old laser out of the middle. It's a pretty cool looking gun design. This definitely seems like something I can see them making a high grade out of. And speaking of high grades, I do have a few new images of the high grade kits to share with you guys. Now I was gonna do these in with the regular Gunplay news, but since Re-Rise just started and I'm kind of interested in the show now, I thought it'd be nice to put the Re-Rise info all into one nice, neat, clean video. So here here is the box art for the soon to be released Earth 3 Gundam. This kit's gonna be coming out very soon. In fact, by the time you see this video, it's entirely possible this kit is out already because once we get the box art for a kit like this, the release is usually pretty soon after. They're showing off the Earth 3 in all three modes, the Earth 3 Gundam, the Core Gundam, and the Earth 3 Flyer. There's a little QR code that lets you watch the first episode of the anime, a nice little bit of cross promotion there. So for those of you interested in the Earth 3 Gundam, or maybe if you just got turned on to the series in general by the anime, there you go, you got that to look forward to this month. Also, 
thanks to the anime, we did get to see what the Valkyrie lander looks like in mobile suit mode. Now, I'm not sure why they were keeping this so tightly under wraps because it's spoiled in the opening. So it's a little bit weird that for all these weeks and weeks, if not months leading up to the show, they were hiding the mobile suit mode only to spoil it in the opening. That's kind of weird, but here it is. Within mobile suit mode, it's a lot more obvious that this kit is based off the Astrea Type F. You can really tell by looking at the head and how it has those fins coming up off the back. The sword's really obviously Astrea. I think it's actually a pretty cool looking design. We also got to see a little bit of a better image of it in dragon mode, so you can kind of start to see how the transformation is pieced together. I do think it's pretty clever how they repurposed the green face guard from the Astrea as a way to kind of hide the face while it's in dragon mode. And looking at some of these joints here, it seems like it's at least partially using the cross silhouette frame. If that turns out to be true, this could be a really good kit because the SD cross silhouette kits are some of the best SDs we've ever gotten. We did also get to see some more images of the, I believe, are called Avalanche Mars parts or something. I'm going to put the name up on the screen because I don't remember exactly what these are called, but these are actually not part of the Valkyrie lander due to their very obviously similar color schemes and the fact they're both based off kind of XE inspired double O suits. I thought this was like a build custom set that came with just some pieces from the SD Gundam and the SD Gundam would like turn to armor for the other Gundams, but no, this is a totally separate thing. With that said though, Given the styling of it, I don't think it would be that far of a stretch to speculate that this combines with the Valkyrie Lander in some way. Now, so far, the only combination we've seen of it has been with a GM GM where it gives it Avalanche Exia style shoulders and the Exia style arm sword. I am really interested to see how this interacts with the Valkyrie Lander though, because I looked very carefully at both kits and there's not a single piece in this set that is shared with the Valkyrie Lander, but this is very obviously styled like it's meant to go with it. So there's gotta be some kind of really cool combination between the two and I wanna see what that looks like. We also got to see some official stock photos for the Seltzam arms parts. It's really nothing special, it's just those cool parts from the Seltzam, basically the three best parts of the kit, but cast in blue for use with all your standard Gunpla models. Alternatively, I suppose you could put a second extending arm on your Seltzam for extra extending arm action. The colors wouldn't match completely, but it would still look pretty cool. So next up, we have our first new-ish reveal, and that is our first official real clear look at the Build Gamma Gundam. Now we saw this teased back when they first announced Re-Rise. They had this on display with no other information about it. And there was a little bit of speculation around it because it looked like it was based off the the old high grade Rick Dias, but it also kind of looked like a new mold in some spots. And well, a lot of times with Gunpla and speculation, the simplest answer is usually the correct one. And in this case, this absolutely is the old Rick Dias with new tooling in some places. Basically, they did the same thing they did with the Sinanji Stein and the Jigen Blastmaster. And really, now that I think about it, a lot of the newer kits we've gotten lately that have been retooling older models, and they've updated the joints in some areas of the kit to make it feel more modern. So the design itself is mostly the same as the Rick Dias. The really only obvious parts that have been aesthetically changed are the backpack and the head. The rest of it is either unchanged Rick Dias parts or new molded parts that very closely match the style of the original Rick Dias. From the back, you can see that they've retooled the binders, so they look kind of like, kind of like the Mark II Gundam shields, actually. I think that might be what they they were going for with this. And he's got this just absolutely massive cannon that actually looks pretty cool. And what I really like about this that I just noticed is they actually use the original Rick Dias head as the scope for the gun. It's kind of funny. And this is just a huge, huge gun. Here you can get a better look of that vaguely wound wart inspired head. Compared to the big blocky simple aesthetic of the body, it's surprisingly detailed. And here we can see some of the improvements they've made from the original Rick Dias. So the elbows have been retooled, so he gets a full 180 degree bend, or pretty close to it at least. His knees have been modified so he gets a larger bend and his hips have been replaced with universal joints, very similarly to what they did with the Jigen Blastmaster. That's pretty much all the key joints that are usually restricted on these older models, so it's pretty cool to see that with just a little bit of simple retooling, they've actually come pretty close to bringing this up to the standard of a modern kit. And this is going to be a P Bandai release coming out in January of next year. Also coming out in January is that white core Gundam variant we saw at the hobby show. Now, there was a little bit of confusion that I had last time I was looking at these. I wasn't really sure which one of these was a full Gundam and which was an upgrade set, even though I knew one of them was the Gundam and one was the upgrade set. This one's the full Gundam. You get the core Gundam, you get everything you need to make the Gundam with this set. Now, it's important that I say that because the next kit we're gonna be looking at is a bit different. But right here, right now, this is what you get. It's a pretty cool looking variant. The flight mode actually looks pretty awesome. It's got that GPO-1FB kind of booster thing going on. He's also got this really cool energy shield and it can use the full burn thrusters as a pair of arm mounted punching sword 
hammer things. I don't even know what to call these because I actually didn't see this picture until just now, but this is cool. I like how you can put his other arm mounted weapons on his shoulders as well, or you can put the shields on the gauntlet. Based off functionality alone, this might be my favorite core Gundam upgrade we've seen so far. And this is the core Gundam upgrade that does not include the core Gundam itself. It's just a build custom set. Now they might be doing this for other armors as well going into the future since we've seen five different variants for the core Gundam so far. We could see more as the show goes on. We're only a few episodes in. Already though, I am really liking the amount of customizability and different options you get with this Gundam. I think having this many multiple equipment options for the same Gundam isn't really something they explored far enough in the Build Divers and Build Fighters series before. So I'm really glad to see them finally digging deeper into this. The closest we ever had to this was, I guess, the Lightning Gundam, but even then we only got three packs and one of them clashed horribly with the base Gundam. So it's nice to see them pursuing that idea a little bit further and refining them into something that's actually pretty cool. And when you break apart the flyer, you do get a full set of armor that you can use with your core Gundam. We already saw this in mobile suit mode last episode of Gunpla News, so if you want to see that, go check out that video. For tonight, though, we're going to close out the video with the Lucky Draw Earth 3 Gundam Gold version. Now this is a absolutely blinged out Earth 3 Gundam covered in chrome gold. It looks incredibly cool in these renders because these renders don't show dub marks, but of course this is not a kit that was designed to be plated, which means it's probably gonna look like ass. Now regarding how they're gonna release this, this is going to be kind of a lottery item. Part of a Gundam Breaker mobile promotion, I believe this is only running in Japan, so even though it's technically just a Twitter giveaway and normally you would be able to enter this, I believe if you're outside of Japan, you're actually ineligible. So this is just kind of a Japanese thing, just another one of those bright gold plated exclusives they love to make for basically every mecha franchise ever. Seriously, I remember back when I was collecting Transformers, you would see so many of these. Takara would do one of these for like every single major Transformer release. Every Optimus Prime, every Megatron, Leo Prime, anything big and popular they'd make a gold plated Lucky Draw version of. That or they'd make a black version, usually both. But anyways guys, that's gonna do it for tonight's video. So hope you enjoyed this. Leave a like if you did. I might have another episode of Gunplay News coming out pretty soon, just talking about some of the other stuff that's not Build Divers Re-Rise, so definitely look forward to that. If you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more Gundam and Gunpla content. If you want to get yourself some cool Gundam models, don't forget to use the link in the description to New Type HQ and use code CHANNEL2S for 10% off your order. And as always, I'm your host, Second Soundwave, and I'll see you next time. Take care, guys.